everyone, this is Carolise, and today we're going to be talking about the software development life cycle. Yes, the SDLC. We're going to be talking about what it is, why you need to know about it, how it came about, what are the different steps and phases of the software development life cycle, and also whether or not waterfall and agile is a part of it. So it's going to be good. I'm going to be explaining everything, but there's no need to skip ahead and no need to skip this video. It's all going to be right here. So stay with me and watch to the end. anybody else is stuck on 90s R&B like me. I am literally stuck. 90s R&B, early 2000s, up to 2010s, I am absolutely stuck on that. I feel like the music after that is just not the same, not the same quality, not the same sound. I mean, I don't expect it to be the exact same because every decade the music kind of changes, but like the quality I felt like has gone down. So. I am completely stuck on the 90s and early 2000s. So if you like those genre of music as well, that, you know, that decade, um, put a comment. Don't leave me out here alone to look like I'm the only old person that want to listen to old music, you know? Maybe I'm stuck in the genre when I was in my prime. Although I think I'm still in my prime. Yeah, I'm not an old person yet. <laughs> So anyway, so if you like that kind of music, just leave a comment. <laughs> okay, so back to the topic. The topic today is a software development life cycle. And the reason I'm going back to talk about this is because one comment that I received on other videos to ask me to do a video on this. So I think it was Irina and maybe a couple others. So if you all are listening, shout out to y'all for bringing up this topic and I'm very very happy to do a video on this and also because i want to go back to basics right i want to go back to the things that give rise to where we are today in it in business analysis in project management in product management so it's a good um way to start off the new series i'm going to start which is going to be called ba basics right business analysis basics going back to the root causes of how we came to this career and the things that you have to, have to, have to know to be successful in this field. So let's talk about the software development life cycle. Now, life cycle, right? We already know what software is and what development is, but it's just a life cycle part. What is that, right? And as you can tell from the name, it's cyclical, I meaning it's iterative. It goes around and comes back around. So that's the life cycle and it includes several steps or phases and different people call it by different names because you know every book has their own twist on what they call it but generally it has six phases so you have your planning phase this is where you get all your requirements you understand what the client's needs are you find out what they're trying to build and the purpose of it you identify the stakeholders who are going to be involved you come up with your scope you write your um you, you do your feasibility study to make sure it even makes sense so all of the planning that needs to happen before you do anything is done in that first step it's very important and it's where most of the work will lie as a business analyst. You'll be involved a lot up front before you actually get to any implementation or anything like that. You should be involved in the planning phase. You definitely will be doing all the requirements, gathering the feasibility. But some companies, sometimes you find that by the time it gets to you, they've already decided that they're going to do this project. So... Sometimes you don't have as much influence to say whether or not this should be done or not. Normally, upper management goes off on some camp or some meeting and they come up with all these initiatives that they want to do. And then it comes to you to say, hey, we need to do this. And you don't get the opportunity to really go back and think through and do the feasibility to see if this was actually a good thing to do. You know, sometimes your hands are tied there. But in terms of the software development life cycle, this would be the first step, the first phase of 
the software development life cycle. So that is planning, right? Which is, some people call it the requirements analysis phase. Um, because you're doing requirements, elicitation, and you're also doing analysis to make sure this is actually what you should be doing. You're also clarifying any ambiguity that may happen between the client's expectation and what you, you understood. So there's a lot of back and forth, there's a lot of talking, a lot of communication, a lot of meetings, and understanding what the problem is to be able to come up with the best solution is very important in this first phase of the SDLC, the planning phase. After you've done your planning, then you would have your design. So the output of the planning is that you have your business requirements document, or you have your SRS document, which are basically the same, or even just a project scope document. What you produce at the end of the planning phase is this is what we're going to do. This is the scope, the limitations, the things that we're going to put in, the things that we're not going to do of this project. So you have to delineate that. You have to say at the end of all this planning, we have agreed on what we're going to build. So there is a lot of sign off that you need from the client, from the project committee or whoever has the say so to say, yes, go ahead, go forward with this. We agree that this is what we're going to produce at the end of this process. So the software development life cycle really doesn't start until you've actually done the planning, although planning is a part of it, right? So you have to know, actually know that this is what you're going to build before you go in there to build anything and develop any kind of software, right? So once you've done that, the next phase is your design phase. So you've agreed what it is, so you've done the what. The design is gonna be important because before you can just jump and start writing code, you have to set the stage. You gotta prep everything and prepare for everything, right? So part of that could be your architecture. So maybe you need to look at the mobile architecture, maybe you need new servers, maybe you need whatever the layout of the, the environment needs to be for you to develop the code, you're gonna to have to do it in your design phase. So a part of the design is not just your front end, but also it's your architectural design. So your design phase is where all of that happens. And so the design is gonna take as input what came out of the phase before, which is in the planning phase, you had your SRS and you had your BRD, you had your documentation and your scope document. When you get to your design phase, you're going to say, okay, this is what they want to do because you've already decided on what it is. Knowing your design is getting more into the how you're going to do that and what it's going to look like. When you've done your planning and you've done your design, the next phase is going to be your implementation and your coding. So by the time you get to implementation and coding, a lot of the upfront work has already been done. So all they're doing is just taking whatever your designs are and your requirements are and making that translate into actionable code, like get it, get it written, get the code written to do that. At the end of the coding process, then you have testing. So the testing is going to be, they call testing by their various name based on the type of testing. You have unit testing, which is testing the actual code within the system, make sure it works properly. Then you have regression testing, smoke testing, UAT testing, all of that stuff. So testing can be very broad um, and can encompass all different types of ways to make sure the software is reliable, that it doesn't re uh, act in any way that's unexpected, that you capture all of the bugs and stuff like that. So testing is a very rigorous exercise and that will be the fourth stage of your software development life cycle. So after you've tested, then you have deployment. And deployment could be to different types of environment. Many times you'd be deploying to your production environment. This is where your end users actually are, where people are actually using the software to do their business. That's your production environment, right? But you can also be deploying to a demo environment, to a sandbox environment, to a test environment. It could be any such setup, depending on how the business is and how your company works. But your deployment is really making the software that you've developed accessible to the end users. So you had um, all of this stuff that you did in the implementation phase, all the coding. Now let's test it to make sure it works. And then once you've tested it, let's put it in the hands of the end user to see how they use it. Once you've deployed, you think this would be the end of it. You know, you build the software, it's out there. Okay, I'm done. But that's not the case. Once you've deployed, you still have to go through maintenance. You have to make sure that the software keeps up to date, that it's you know current, that it's still relevant. So there's a lot of maintenance process that could just be making sure it still works on the different browsers, where the browsers change how they operate, making sure that the code still matches based on some kind of change in the language that you are using. So things like that, 
you always have maintenance. So there's always enhancement. So once you build the software, it's not one and done, right? There's always going to be new requirements, improve it, new things that people want to do with it. And so you have this whole maintenance process. And if it becomes a new feature, then you have to go back through the whole cycle again, go back to planning, to make sure you have all the requirements. Then you go back to your design to make sure that it is properly fit in the architecture and you have a good UX and all that stuff. Then you have to go implement the code. Then you got to go test it. Then you deploy it. Then you maintain it. And then there's another feature. You go back to the cycle again. So that is the reason for having a framework called the software development life cycle so that you can continually know the different phases of how to actually deliver good software. So the reason why this really became the best framework for building software was because imagine this, right? You're working in a team and one person decides that they want to go start um, by writing documentation. The other person decides they're going to go do some design and somebody else decides they're going to go just start writing code. When you come together to actually deliver the software, nothing will actually match because the person may have documented something that the coder didn't build and the coder didn't build something that the designer didn't design so it would be just chaos and that's why you need these phases so you know when you're done with this phase then you move on to this phase and this phase goes to this phase and so on and so forth now is waterfall the same as the software development life cycle and does agile fit the software development life cycle. Let me address that. So the software development life cycle is just the framework, okay? This is how we will work. Whether you're doing waterfall or you're doing agile, you're still a part of the SDLC. Obviously, it fits a waterfall model very well, right? Because as one phase finishes, it becomes the input for the next phase. But even within agile, you're still doing all of those phases, just that you're doing it in a different way. So Agile is still a part of the software development life cycle. You're still planning, you're still doing your design, you're still doing your implementation, you're still doing your testing, you're doing your deployment, you're doing your maintenance, you're just doing it in sprints and in different ways, you know, that we talked about before. I have the video on Agile, so you can go check those out and that will explain a lot more about the Agile methodology. So that's it guys. That was my take on the software development life cycle. I really hope this was useful for you. I hope you will subscribe to the channel and check out my other videos where I have different series on business analysis, on agile methodology, on core skills and soft skills. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. What are you going to say to my audience? Say something. I I play all day. That's what you want to say? You will play all day, huh? And I eat all day. And you give your mommy lots of trouble because you got food yeah. in your mouth right now. What did you eat? <laughs> Cheetos. Oh and I'm about Cheetos. Take my eye. Sorry. It's okay. And I love to hug. Alright, right, right, go, go, go. Food. Mommy, do this. No, that's not yours. This is mommy's to play with, okay? Okay. But I'm to show the audience. Okay. This is my mommy toy. And his name is Mr. Peace. Say hello. Mr. Peace. Say hello. 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 <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs> well, mommy, do you have water? Yes, you can get water. Okay,